hello friends welcome to my channel go digit today in this video we will learn about the concept of git squash and git rebase so for that uh, we have to uh, we will first learn about that how we can use this operation in the azure devops and then we will learn about how we can do the same thing on the vs code itself so uh, before we start first of all uh, in case you don't have the Azure DevOps account, then you can uh, create an account for free via live.com ID or outlook.com ID. And when you uh, log in via in, on the URL dev.azure.com, then you will be greeted with this kind of a dashboard. So first of all, we have to create a project. And as you can see, I have already created a project called BC Training. And then uh, just to give you an overview about this uh, tool, it's just a it's like a project management tool where you can perform all the operations uh, and you can manage your complete project which uh, and the steps which come under the software development lifecycle. So if I say it's not only limited to a source control management system, but it is uh, it covers everything right from if you want to manage your requirement, design, code, testing deployment every sort of operation you can manage from here you can manage the timeline you can manage your resources and everything of which is come under the project development you can manage this thing from here okay so uh, there is one uh, one concept here which is called repos okay so when i click on the repos here the thing is that repository is something where all your source code is available Right. So for example, let me click on plus new repository, which means that I want to create a new repository. When I want to create a new repository, it is asking me certain details like repository type, which is Git for our case. Okay. Git, uh, everybody knows about it. It is like a tool where which helps us to track the changes of whatever minimal changes or whatever the maximum changes you are doing in a particular file or in a, on a group of files. So it can manage those changes and you can have a history of all the changes which you're making in your code. Okay, so this is what like I want to control the code inside my repository with this Git technology. Okay, then I just want to name uh, my Git rep uh, this repository. So let's uh, because we want to learn Git squash. So I'm giving this name Git squash only. Okay, now add a readme uh, file, which means that uh, it will add a file uh, of readme where you can enter the description of your repository. Uh, although it is not required, if you just don't want it, that you can uncheck it as well. But uh, for example, I'll do that and click on create. So when you create the same, uh, you get to see that uh, now I have this my repository with me, along with one file here which is called readme.md and it has certain normal uh, text written about your repository. If you want to change it and you want to write down your own text, whatever, uh, whichever uh, your repository is based on, you can define here uh, the description about your repository so that uh, the general people whosoever or anybody who's a part of your project wants to understand about this repository, they can understand from here. Okay. Although this uh, file does not have any code uh, in on its own. But uh, so this is about the file. Now, uh, once the repository gets created, you have to click on this branches option. And here, uh, when you click on all, you can see that by default system will create a main branch. So main branch is nothing but uh, you can understand this as a as a as a placeholder where all your refined code is available. A bug free code is available where uh, like you can rely upon this code which is a part of this main branch which you can deploy to any environment it's a production code available here which is tested properly no bug is there performance wise everything is good so this is a very untouchable kind of a branch where directly no developer can access this no developer can directly push any code here or something like that Okay, so this is a very, uh, very important branch, you can say. And if I click here, you can see that all the code, uh, all the files, all the code, which is a part of this is a very uh, kind of a bug free code here. Okay, so this is my main branch. 
now as i said that it's a it's a very important branch and no developer can directly access it so let's say now i want to do something i want to write uh, my my part okay my code i want to write so to do that we do not have to directly work here but we can create a new branch so what i can do i can i can click on the new branch and then it now it is asking me that uh, what will be the name of my branch so let's say i can write down uh, develop okay so when i write down develop it is asking me that based on main right now i my repository have only one branch so that is why i i don't have any other option to select the other branches but i can select on main okay so that means whatever code inside the main is there it will come automatically to my develop branch as well okay you can link any particular work item if you want to right now i will not uh, take you to this uh, work item uh, part so let's skip that part it is uh, not mandatory although so let me click on create so now if i click on branches you can see i have two branches main and develop and you can see that two tags are here default and compare that main is my default branch and now if you see this column behind and ahead so this 00 means that my develop branch is neither behind of my default branch and nor ahead of my main branch so that means whatever code inside of the main branch is also available in the develop branch okay and if i show you here if i click on main you can see the history it has only a uh, one commit available which means that only one uh, code is pushed uh, inside this branch and if i click on develop you will find the same thing that only one commit is pushed inside this branch okay so both are same currently now let's uh, let's add something inside the develop branch okay for example uh, i add one new file in my develop branch right the file name is uh, let's say test file right uh, you can name it anything whatever you want to because i just want to tell you the concept of the git squash okay so i don't want to push any al code here just to uh, we will go we will create a text file only and through that concept we will learn uh, in a very simplified manner the concept of squash and rebase okay so now you can see that that one file is there which is currently blank so what i can do here is that uh, let me write something for example 1 plus 1 is equals to let's say 3 okay although we know uh, it is wrong but let's say i am telling you from the code example that i am writing one code which i am feeling will work this is my first scenario let's say my scenario number 1 so this is the code which you want to write this is the scenario which you want to write and currently this is the code which you have written which you feel that it will work okay but we know it will not work so let's say now i have write down my code in this file and let me click on commit so what i can do i can give the message of my commit that what code i am pushing so let's say this is my first commit okay and the branch name is develop which means that i am pushing this code in my develop branch so click on commit and now if you click on branch you can see that your develop branch is one ahead of main that means this is something there is something in the develop which is not a part of the main and if you click on this one you will see that this one is the first commit which we just pushed okay and if i go back and if i click on develop and go to history you can see that now the graph is uh, uh increased to one more point in a linear way and it is showing me as a first commit so develop branch is having one commit which has the readme file and the second commit which has my test file but uh, my main does not have so 
right it has only one dot so now again go back to the develop and what I can do I can click on test again and this time I because this code is wrong so definitely it will fail in the testing part so I can now change the code and let's say this time I'm writing four okay and let me click on commit again and write down second commit. click on commit and now the same thing will happen that you can see that now I have two commits first commit and the second commit in my develop branch against this file so two commits are there but since I know that the code is wrong so it will definitely fail again in the testing part and now I realize that okay the correct answer is two so this is my right code which will work if I compile it or if I test it okay so let's commit again and third commit I name this as a third commit to the develop only commit and now show if you click on the history you will see that uh, to perform one scenario to write down the one scenario it took me three commits to complete the work of first scenario although my write code is available in the third commit but my branch or my file is having this history as first second and third right and I know that these two commits are useless basically there is uh, not a right code is available here so there is no point of uh, taking this these two commits as well forward to my main branch as I told you that uh, our main thing is that once my code is done uh, which is completely bug free and tested it is our responsibility that that code should be a part of the main branch right so now the question is that we have to move these three commits which are now because develop is three ahead of my main so we have to push these three changes to my main branch so but it is asking me that create a pull request okay so create a pull request means so let's click on this button and now it is showing me new pull request that whatever is available in develop I want to push that into the main because my main is currently behind and main is my final branch so it is showing me that file is only one okay file is one only but it has which has the final code written but it has three commits first commit second commit and third commit okay so now if let's say I write down uh, scenario one and then I can add a reviewer and then I click on create so now my PR is created and currently it is active which means that the code is still in my develop it is not pushed to the main until and unless I approve it but before I approve okay so let's see the concept of git squash now so if you click on complete here you can see this option called merge type so here you will find certain uh, types of merging merging means that you we want to merge my code from the develop to the main so it has this option called merge first option which is no fast forward like it will maintain a non non linear history okay so whatever uh, commits the three commits in my develop it will get pushed to my main and it will add one extra commit of merge and that is how the merge commit will work rebase just simply means that it will just simply pull uh, put all the three commits of my develop uh, branch to my main branch as it is and create a linear history right but my requirement is that I don't want to push all those three non uh, all the three commits to my main but I want to push only the last commit because I know the first and second commit are useless basically so for that I can use this merge type called squash which means that it will consolidate okay it will it is it will like consolidate my three commits into one and push only one commit to my main so that my main branch will always be a very very cleaner 
right very very clean that it does not have any useless commit inside it okay so i will use this quash commit and then now it is asking me or giving me a warning as well that deleting the source branch when squashing is recommended my source branch is developed and it is recommended although if you don't want to delete your develop branch then that's perfectly fine but uh, if you are using squash then it is recommended i will show you although uh, we can delete by checking this delete develop after merging see the warning is gone but if you don't do then also system will not give you any error now the thing is customize the merge comment message okay so i can give the message uh, the name of my commit message which i want to push to my main final commit of scenario one okay and then click on complete merge and then just you can see that it is done completed okay now if i want to delete my source branch i can delete so but just i want to show you something go to the branch and now if you click on main and if you click on history you will see that i have only one commit final commit of scenario one and if you click on this to know what is the change so you can see that two changes are done first line and second in the two lines of code you have added this complete test file is added so that's the only the final code is reached to my main and without any those uh, two useless commits so very cleaner uh, history i'm maintaining in my main and if you see the branch and you can still see that now develop is showing one behind although if you click on one it is showing me that final commit of source scenario one which which are which is although in reality it is not that is why uh system was saying that if you use squash commit you have to delete the source branch okay because now it is uh giving only confusions if you see this three all these three commits are already reached to my main but with a different message okay and all the code is there so what I can do, I can go to the pull request, completed one. And if I see this, and if I want to delete the source branch, I can delete so. And this is how we can basically uh, can understand that my main gets only one commit. And this is how we consolidated our three, uh, three useless commits or two useless commits into, into one. So that is the power of the get squash right and we can do directly in the azure devops itself okay so in the this is the part one of the video as i told you uh, we will learn about this git squash concept via vs code also where let's say i don't want to delete the develop branch i just want to uh, clean the history commit history of my develop branch itself as well right so we can do so how we can do so via vs code we will learn uh, in the second part of the video so till then uh, if you like this video i request you to please hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching this video